Do you ever think about the nature of death? And how random it truly really is? The one thing that we as humans all have in common is that we're all going to die. Yet we spend our lives prolonging something that is only inevitable. We like to think for ourselves. We have some sort of sort of power or control over our own lives. Yet at any moment, a serial killer could make you their next victim. A, a car accident could hit you. A nuclear bomb launched by accident could hit your city and start World War III. Do you ever think about what life would be like if the blindfold was taken off? How pointless everything would seem. Yeah, me neither. Today we're gonna build a nuclear bomb in Minecraft! Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Mr. Bowtie! <laughs> Bowtie. Bowie old boy! There are already something like... 5,110,000... 5 million? That's a lot of... Well, Mr. Bowtie, there are already a lot of nuclear bombs in Minecraft on the internet. What makes you think you're unique? What makes you think that you're special? What makes you think that anything you could come up with could ever be remotely original? Are you delusional? Good question! I ask myself that every single day. Well, you see, the problem is that all of these other bombs, sure, they are fancy. And sure, they use all sorts of fancy effects to actually look good and give the player a fun experience. And sure, they are way better designed than anything I could ever come up with, but the fact of the matter is, none of them are, as far as I know, scientifically accurate. Like, just to take a random example, none of them are... The Gadgets. 21 kiloton TNT nuclear bomb launched during the Trinity test of July 1945, New Mexico. As part of the Manhattan Project, this bomb and its two successors, Little Boy and Fat Man, would be the first nuclear bombs launched in history, making way for the development of the Cold War, leading to the deaths of millions upon millions of people. The successful detonation of the gadget marks the beginning of the end of humanity and would send us all right to the brink of extinction. Like that. Like, like, like none of those nuclear bombs are, are the Trinity Test in, in Minecraft. And I want the Trinity Test in Minecraft. I want the Trinity Test in Minecraft. I want the Trinity Test in Mi- Oh, I want the Trinity Test in Minecraft. I want the Trinity Test in Minecraft. But in order to do that, we first have to understand how a nuclear explosion works in real life. A nuclear bomb explodes in four slash three kind of different steps. In step one, when this first goes off, a hot ball made of plasma will appear around where the bomb was detonated. Plasma, in case you're unaware, is what's often called the fourth state of matter, even hotter than hot gas, and it is what lightning, the sun, and all the other stars are made out of. Within this ball of plasma, everything perishes. Just, just woof, poof, gone. Humans, trees, rocks, concrete houses, concrete houses, everything burns to gas with nothing left. In the case of the Trinity test, this fireball had a radius of about 200 meters. It also exploded above the ground, not on the ground, so something we can't do because of Minecraft's build height limit. I, I know, it sucks, but it's whatever. We'll make you. Step 2. The Blast Wave. When any explosion occurs of any size, nuclear or not, it sends up what's known as a blast wave, or a wall of super compact air that crushes 
anything it touches. This wall of air gets gradually weaker and weaker as it spreads out over a larger area. Now, some weak types of glass will usually shatter if it experiences about 1 psi of pressure, which will be approximately 3.9 kilometers away from the explosion. But that is nothing compared to 650 meters away from the explosion, where the blast wave so kindly provides its surroundings with a whopping 20 psi of pressure, essentially wrecking all buildings in the nearby area. Side note here, the unit PSI stands for pounds per square inch. If you experience about one PSI of force from the blast wave, it would be the same as having your body covered with slightly larger boxes of butter. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot of force, but being hit by a blast wave of 20 PSI of pressure would be the same as having two full-grown cows falling onto you. It's a lot. But don't worry about the blast wave, because anything within 1.18 kilometers of the explosion is going to be instantly set on fucking fire. When a nuclear bomb goes off, it releases a figurative ton of thermal energy, or as the nerds call it, infrared radiation. Everything that has heat gives off radiation, and the hotter the object is, the stronger the radiation. The, the nuclear bomb is so hot that it gives off infrared radiation so strong it causes anything that's flammable within 1.18 kilometers of the explosion to spontaneously burst into flames. That includes wood, fabric, skin, hair, oh, and you! <laughs> Very much you. Final stage, radiation. Wouldn't really be a nuclear bomb without it, would it? Another type of radiation that the nuclear bomb is releasing is called ionizing radiation. Now, ionizing radiation is radiation that is strong enough to push an electron out of orbit from an atom, thereby ionizing the atom. And the nuke is spewing this shit like there's no tomorrow. Because there isn't. This ionizing radiation is strong enough that it can ruin DNA, the very blueprint of your biology. Anything within 1.4 kilometers radius of the explosion is going to be blasted with a lethal dose of ionizing radiation and will have a 15% chance of dying from cancer within the next few months. Unless it, of course, you know, fucking burns to death first. So, those are the numbers we're working with. Now all we've got to do is... Build it! And with that out of the way, I should finally set out on my epic journey to learn to code in Java and make a modded, scientifically accurate nuclear bomb in Minecraft. Except coding in Java is really difficult to do, and I don't want to. No, instead what we're going to be making is something called a Minecraft data pack. In case you're unaware, Minecraft has a thing called commands, or... <laughs> cheat codes, where you can type a specific type of code into the chat to change the world around you. You can spawn lots of mobs or you can change the blocks around you, basically anything with some limitations. Now, if you take loads of those commands and put them all into a TXT document and take that TXT document and put it into your data pack folder and put that data pack folder and put it into your Minecraft world, you can activate multiple commands at once and even make them activate each other. And I did it! I made it! I made the bomb! It's there, it's here, it's ready, it's ready to go. Only took me like three years or something. But uh, I made it, it's here, and I mean, look, look, look at this world. Look at this nice little world. We have some, we have some sheep, some pumpkins, we have horses. You want to build a house? I think we should build a house, uh, but first just let me drop a bomb on it. So we start by writing slash function and we type arm stand bomb drop and we run. <laughs> we run like hell. Okay, and there it comes and yep, and we're blind because, you know, in a real atomic explosion, you would go blind looking at the bomb. So <laughs> So that's what, that's what happens. I also got some nausea and withering effects because, you know, uh, cancer and all that. But look, 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 it's generating, it's generating. Okay, so it's kind of slow. It's not so much a nuclear explosion as it's an explosion generator. Like it doesn't go like that. It goes 
uh, sort of like what you're seeing here. But once it's done with this, we also have to wait for like 20 minutes for it to generate the rest of the area. So that's fun. But yes, this is the fireball itself. This fireball has a radius of 200 meters. I have also allocated 24 gigabytes of RAM to Minecraft for it to work, because if, if, if I didn't allocate those gigabytes, it would just crash. Uh, so you need 24 gigabytes of RAM to run this thing. Listen, I, I, I set out on a journey to make a scientifically accurate nuclear bomb in Minecraft. Not a scientifically fast nuclear bomb in Minecraft, okay? I, it's, it's accurate, it's accurate. So once this is done loading, you're gonna notice that everything freezes. You'll see it right very soon. Just give it a second. Oh, it's done, it's done, it's done. That which means we, ooh, we teleport. Yeah, okay, there we go. So I'm now sent to teleport command, as you can see. But as you also can see, I got no successfully teleported to the bow tie tube. Blah, blah, blah. I didn't get that because it's busy loading the world. And that, that takes a while. It takes a long while, actually. It takes such a long while that I'm gonna just get a second. It usually takes like 20 minutes or, or something. I might as well practice some ukulele while we wait. Ah. 20 minutes late. Oh, oh, shit's happening, shit's happening. Never mind. <clears throat> okay, here we are. So you should see. Yes, yes. Hail my TNT. Yeah, so we're about 1.2 kilometers away from the explosion. So what's happening here is that the bomb is sort of scanning the area as it sees it and dropping TNT for every every seven blocks. And it scans all of those areas and drops TNT. You saw them just now. Uh, and then it also rem does this for some reason. Yes, and then it removes everything that's flammable apart from these wood pipes because I thought it looked good. Look, all the TNT right now. It's, listen, okay, there's a compromise between what is scientifically accurate and what works and what's funny. I lean heavily on the scientifically accurate part. I'm also limited by Minecraft. Minecraft, believe it or not, is not made to have scientifically accurate nuclear bombs in it. Oh, look, a village. <laughs> Villages are so fun to explode because they have all these little all right all dead by the explosion. I, I forgot. Um, but you can just oh, hang on, we have to see the effects of this. This is so fun. I wanna kill the villagers. Like like real ones. I don't think I can I can I can't keep that in. <laughs> Villager Villager? This house looks like it needs a home. You live here now. And we need someone to look over the crops. That's nice. Lots of people at the market today. That's good. And we need someone to take care of the hay. You and you and you and you. I'm not going insane, but I know there are no villages here. I'm just, it takes a while for it to load. Just give it a second. <sighs> Story of my life. And you take care of this hay. And you can take care of the tree. Lovely tree. Look, there it is. There it is. And, yeah, and they're dead. They're not dead. Somehow. Miraculously. That's not supposed to happen, actually. Would you reckon that this is about what a, what a house struck by an atomic bomb would look like after the explosion? I don't think it would. I, I think it would be more broken. I mean, no wind... windows. No windows in sight, which is accurate and good. Oh, did we put someone in this house? I did, yeah, we did. Okay. He's sound asleep, not knowing that Armageddon is upon him. The market. Oh my god. It's just completely... Just, oh my god. It's beautiful. Our guy has promptly woken up and run for his life, I reckon. Look at this. Look at the desolation. See? Isn't that fun? Isn't that hilarious? Isn't that fucking sick? Hi. 
Uh, this video is a sort of Trojan horse of sorts uh, for something else I want to talk about. You see, I believe that everyone on Earth right now, you included, are living in incredible danger. We are currently at the brink of ending the world by accident. But in order to understand why that is, we first have to understand how we got here. Approaching the mid-1940s, the physics community had started to realise that, using the recently developed theory of relativity in combination with unstable isotopes of plutonium and uranium, we could create weapons of unfathomable power. And in a rush to beat Nazi Germany to making this bomb, the Americans developed their own. And in July of 1945, successfully detonated the world's first atomic bomb. The gadgets. Inside the Holocaust, cameras record the havoc. Following the development of the nuclear bomb, tensions arose between the United States of America and the Soviet Union, and a nuclear arms race began. Both countries started building up their nuclear arsenals, and policies called first use were put in place. The essence of first use policies are, um, well, I have nuclear weapons, and you have nuclear weapons, so uh, we keep those weapons pointed at each other at all times, and if I get as much as a hint that you have used one of yours at me, I will fire back with all of mine at you, mutually assuring our destruction." That last one, by the way, is called uh, Massive Retaliation. And Massive Retaliation is one hell of a threat, not only because it threatens to completely annihilate the countries in question, but because it threatens everyone else as well. A nuclear exchange between just two countries at just 100 nuclear bombs would send enough ash and dust into the atmosphere to significantly cool down the Earth, a sort of reverse global warming. It would send the Earth into a new ice age, or as the experts call it, a nuclear winter. In a nuclear winter, it is completely impossible to grow crops or farm animals or just fucking go outside because of radiation poisoning. It would be with all respect to the term, the end of the world. Now, you'd be excused to think that this threat of the end of the world and massive retaliation and all that would make us all safe, yeah? And I mean, in theory, it does. It does make us safe. If your country has nuclear weapons and promises massive retaliation, other countries are discouraged from starting a all-out nuclear war with it. Except, as humans, we have a bad tendency to, well, uh, well as the experts say, um, fuck shit up. Throughout the Cold War, there have been 22 near nuclear accidents that have almost started World War III. Misunderstandings and accidents where someone thought that something was a nuclear bomb heading straight for their country, but it was actually something else entirely. We have had bear attacks on military bases, a, a flock of swans, a flying scientific probe in North Norway. Oh, and also, <laughs> the moon itself was misunderstood for a nuclear bomb once. And that is just mentioning a few of the ones that actually have been shared with the public. Now, I can imagine that some of you are probably thinking something like this. Oh, but pff, we don't have to worry about that anymore, right? Cold War ended a long time ago. The threat of nuclear weapons is completely gone. Oof. Oof. Um. Well. Oh. Today, there are currently 20 
thousand nuclear bombs in the world, enough to destroy us all many times over, and most of them are owned by the US, Russia, or China. And even though the tensions between the US and Russia have released a little bit since the end of the Cold War, the nuclear bombs are still... there. The policies that govern during the Cold War that allows for aforementioned massive retaliation are still in place and ready to be used at a moment's notice. Now, politics is not my strong suit. I don't understand everything that's going on in the world right now. On the contrary, I understand very little. And I don't know what the best thing to do about the situation is. But... Surely I can't be the only one who thinks that a world built on a massive nuclear Mexican standoff is not ideal. It is not something we should just learn to live with, because sooner or later something will go wrong. At some point in the future of humanity, if we want to assure our survival, we have to put down these weapons, destroy them and swear to never produce them ever again. As for right now, there is very little we, the people, can do. But what we can do is get educated and make our voices heard. In the description of this video, you will find multiple links to articles that explain all of this better than I do. You will also find links to petitions you can sign to make it clear to all the world leaders that we don't want nuclear weapons. I also want to give a big thank you and a little shout out to science educator Kyle Hill for inspiring me to making this video. He goes way more into detail on his video over on his channel and he's way better at explaining things than I am. So once you're done here, I recommend you go and check him out. He is really cool. Listen, okay, I I don't mean to be a busk, okay? N nuclear bombs are fun and interesting to play around with in simulations. And if you want to download this thing and play it for yourself, then do that. I'm not gonna stop you. Go, go have fun. The link is in the description. Because at the end of the day, nothing I make in a fucking Minecraft will ever come close to illustrate the true horrors of a nuclear bomb. I just want you to keep everything I've said so far in the back of your mind as you try it out for your first time. I want you to remember that this would only be the beginning. Thank you for watching.